Hello and welcome back to a new Rage Gaming video. My name is Hello and today we're talking New World, Amazon Games' coming MMORPG with its territory-based world, Souls-inspired combat and also its multiple delays. These delays seem to be for good reason though. Now players have finally had a chance to take a look at the game and play a beta version with the NDA finally being lifted. The game definitely needs some work, clearly. But before we get into that, we have some news from today's sponsor, Arcage Unchained, the massive fantasy MMORPG. RPG with its sandbox take on the genre. Unchained is actually a combination of the improvements and updates from the original Arc Age release back in 2014, the new Unchained version released just last year, and this weekend you'll be able to try the game for free from Friday, August 28th through to September the 2nd. This summer event is available both on GamerGo's own platform, Glyph, and Steam 2. Super easy to get involved, download the game through Steam or Glyph, and then redeem the voucher code Summer Trial. And whether you buy a pack or not, any game progress you make will be saved after this period, whether you jump in straight after the weekend or any time after. So it's a perfect time to jump into the world of Eranor and try out this massive sandbox MMO during this free weekend. So be sure to use our link in the description and try Arcade for free right now. Thanks for supporting the channel, guys. These sponsors do make a huge impact, but we try not to do them too often. Now back to the topic at hand. Considering New World has been delayed yet again, but this time for a full year, why are we playing a beta right now for something that more than likely doesn't actually represent what we'll be playing next year. Well, firstly, and obviously, they're hoping to get major feedback en masse to give them direction to improve the next year's release. And also, I feel that they've been forced into doing this beta, even though they might not have wanted to. Players who pre-ordered the game were meant to have a beta back in April, then July, now August. And if they took it away again, I just feel like they would have got too much backlash, and so they had to let us play it. Either way, this is an important time for the game, and one that they hopefully learn a lot from. It's really important that I mention that I love MMOs, and we haven't had a new Western MMO in a long time now. I've been going through older MMOs and talking about my experiences with them, right now in part because of how desperate I am for a new one. And so I really want New World to be good. Its concept, the aesthetic, the Souls-inspired combat for an MMO. The story itself seems intriguing on top of the many interesting systems that they have planned and promised. I want New World to succeed. I want it to be released only when it's good and ready. So hopefully from this beta and with the feedback we can provide to these devs, we can give the game its best possible shot. So I'm going to cover the main feedback that I've been seeing across the beta, the Reddit, and a fair few YouTube and streamers with their respective communities too. And I'll be starting with perhaps the strongest aspect of the game. It's combat. New World has action combat that's a bit more interesting than run-of-the-mill tab tagging and hotbar abilities. Quoted to be heavily inspired by Souls, it's a skill-based system around timing your attacks or dodges and blocking. You have to actually aim your ranged abilities. There's nothing ability spammy about this game. It's much more grounded. Now, early game, we are seeing a lot of people complaining about its very straightforward and repetitive nature, but I do think it's actually a solid but restricted foundation for interesting and measured combat long term, whether you're playing PvE or PvP. We have access to things like the swords, the axes, the shields, the bows, the musket rifles, two-handed hammers, and the magic staffs. And we're able to swap between these whenever we want, but each weapon comes with its own weapon skills that unlock better abilities and important passives. The more time you spend with a weapon, the better you get with it. So your combat style is based around your weapons and armor. You can swap from being, say, a tank to a mage on the fly, but it's probably a good idea to just focus one weapon and one armor type while you're in the early game instead of swapping a lot where you don't really progress much of anything. It'll be that late game where we really start playing around with hybrid styles of gameplay. At least, you'd think so, right? In reality, the three weapon abilities that you have on each weapon are on the same cooldown as every other weapon you swap to. So let's say you use your Q ability on one weapon, and that's on cooldown for say 20 seconds, and then you swap to another weapon, hey, that Q ability is on cooldown for the remaining time, as if you'd used it on the weapon you swapped to. What could be a high pace, rewarding system, built around swapping weapons on the fly mid-combat constantly, it's cut off before it gets going. I could imagine swapping weapons over and over to ignore all your cooldowns and spamming out the various abilities could be super broken in both PvE and PvP, and so they've limited that. 
but the way it works right now is really awkward and just seems bad. My favorite suggestion to fix this right now would probably be the short seconds of cooldown for all weapon abilities when you swap weapon, but not a full cooldown as if you'd already used that weapon's ability when you haven't. Meanwhile, we also have the weight system. Basically, heavy armor means you can't dodge roll, but you're resistant, and light armor gives you a proper dodge roll in trade for being a lot more vulnerable when you do take damage. Medium armor is the perfect middle ground for a short dodge, but some resistances to damage. Therefore, both armor and weapons do play heavily into combat style and how you approach every situation, but the weapons right now are uncomfortably restricted with their abilities. Each only comes with three, and because of the strange global cooldown, you don't really feel like you've got nine with the three weapons you've got equipped, but just three on really long cooldowns. I would say maybe a fourth or even fifth ability slot long term and a different approach to how you swap weapons mid combat and these cooldowns. Now let's move on to the progression systems in New World of which there's many. But in particular, I want to talk about crafting. These are time heavy investments to become great at one profession. So we shouldn't be seeing anyone maxed out or even high level in multiple professions for some time after the launch. So social interaction with other players to get what you need is heavily encouraged and rewarded and that seems to be a big part of the game to be more of a social MMO with the progression systems encouraging that I think that's a great way to do it if we look at say cooking and alchemy cooking is great for any player with lots of benefits right there's ingredients to gather and purchase from the traders and when you use these to cook a meal they can provide different benefits for lots of different play styles whether you need some healing maybe you want some attack buffs maybe you need to increase your speed at gathering and these take effect over time like healing over time while potions are more of an instant version of that but require totally different skills to create and resources so two different professions right and while these concepts are great the actual leveling of professions is what's seeing criticism here the game doesn't use unique recipes so you unlock anything and everything by just leveling the skill they obviously want players to earn their status as a crafter and have use as that crafter but because anyone has access to everything if they just put the time in will eventually have people with multiple professions at high level even if it's slow at launch because nothing stopping them from being a pro at everything except time that's not very interesting feedback i've seen suggested for crafting would reward players with specific professions for the content that they complete i.e crafting specialities similar to the faction choice players make in this game someone able to choose between being a master of the bow or gun crafting letting them craft special weapons of that type or special arrows or ammo rather than being able to do everything by default because you did any of it. Maybe some RNG on what you unlock or reward you for going and completing X dungeon or killing X box, involving yourself in some specific content to encourage both that and the leveling process to be more involved. Right now, that leveling process, if we say stone cutting, is very dull. In stone cutting, you level it by mining stone and then processing that stone, and that's all you do for 35 levels. After that, you reach the next tier, which is lodestone. You do the exact same thing, and that's just how it works all the way. Weaponsmithing consists of crafting iron swords hundreds of times, eventually unlocking steel swords, and then you make hundreds of steel swords. What was promised originally to be an interesting and unique system turned out to be a bit of a mindless grind and very repetitive that anyone can do rather than it feeling sort of special or unique to that player. This is the type of system where you'll see rampant cases of botting and scripting due to its horrifically dull and repetitive nature. This next one is a funny one. It feels like everyone's talked about this one. I saw it everywhere I look. There is no mounts in this game and the fast travel mechanics that do exist are very limited and restricted. With no mounts to make use of, no flight points to access, and that one hour cooldown on your in recall, you're kind of stuck to walking and running everywhere pretty much every time, resulting in an absolute massive amount of walking from point A to B and back again, which becomes a massive amount of time that you spend playing the game just running. When you consider how many obstacles you can encounter in a world like this that you have to go around, you can't always run a straight line to your destination. You've got to follow those paths most of the time. It's a big world and considering how far people can be from one another, sometimes it might not even be worth traveling. I'm kind of lost at this one. It seems obvious that the game is big enough to warrant some proper fast travel mechanics, even if that's just mounts. Next is a bit of a shorter one though, questing. Quest givers around the world give you short missions to go complete in return for currency, equipment, rep, XP, that kind of stuff. It's all generic stuff usually though, gather these things, kill X enemies, 
go kill a specific enemy, deliver some goods, or find a specific item in a specific place. It fits with the world and what you're doing, whether it's building up the world or done to help the town with something it needs. But this applies to every quest in the game, be it main mission or faction quest, whatever you would expect to have more involvement and maybe some interesting unique objectives, well, unfortunately, everything seems like it's more of a repeatable side quest. That's a huge letdown and obviously something people are complaining about. But lastly, this is the biggest one probably, PvP. PvP seems to be one of the worst parts of the game in the beta, something I've seen a lot of complaints about because we have large battles. And this combat system doesn't work for large battles. Basically, we have opt-in PvP in the open world, which is great, and then the larger battles between companies called sieges. That main issue with PvP right now comes down to the CC spam. Basic attacks have the ability to stagger or stun an enemy. So if you've got a quick weapon and you're spamming light attacks, that can be pretty good CC. With just a few people involved, CC spam becomes an overwhelming problem. And these sieges that are planned to be 50 versus 50 battles, well, that's a huge red flag just on paper. In smaller dueling, in 1v1 and smaller scale battles, this system works and works really well. It's very cool. But when we consider the large scale stuff that's actually part of the core of the game, I'm just confused. It's such a messy system when you consider the fact that the world is decided by companies and PvP battles. When the players fight over these territories, they claim new land and then decide the taxes for that land. So there's huge incentive to battle and take control of a region. These battles are on such a large scale though, with the combat meant to be measured, in which your choices matter, well, how are you going to deal with 5 to 10 players or more just rushing you and spamming basic attacks? You cannot. And this is very common. So while the small scale battles like 1v1 dueling seems really good in this game, large scale battles are on the other hand, super busted. And the game is decided not by small 1v1 duels, but by those large scale battles. In this current system, I'd love an arena system or like a system where a company champion is chosen to fight another company champion while everyone in each company watches this big epic duel deciding the fate of the region. And I'd love that way more than I would ever want to play a 50 versus 50 battle in this system. So, in conclusion, the main issue with these systems isn't exactly their design. When we say a lot of this stuff and look at it in a vacuum, it sounds pretty great. And as I've been talking about my previous videos about this game, I really like them on paper. It's just the way they're implemented that's causing a lot of the issues. The combat in concept is great, but a little clunky in use thanks to those restrictions on the cooldowns and the large scale PVP that needs some serious addressing. There's the many progression systems, be it crafting or character strength related, that right now are a little unfun and very repetitive. A lot of that gameplay is dangerously close to that of a chore. And what they've got right now seems fine. It's a beautiful world and the many systems systems that they have in place have a lot of long-term promise and gameplay to them. It's just that I love to see the devs refine the current systems with a bit of balancing and ease up on some of those punishing restrictions or slower grind mechanics. Everything on offer is promising but not that exciting immediately. So even if they fix the issues that players have with the different systems, the question still remains, what is special about this game? Everything we see here today has been done elsewhere but better and there isn't anything that seems unique or special. But before the game even went live, before we could even see this preview, the game director had something to say that actually addresses this. Our goal over the coming months is to give players even more to do while maintaining a polished experience. We plan to focus on adding more mid and end game content, but also features that are just fun and deliver more on the promise of a world in which you can get lost. In particular, we're working towards adding more in the areas of game modes, landmass, AI variety, additional weapon types, quest variety, and more. Before they even let us play this thing, man, they knew what issues they needed to work on. They knew it was bland. And their main focus before they even had the massive feedback from this beta was to spice up the game. Combine that with the feedback, I have to wonder what else they're going to decide needs improving, and hopefully they let us know what they've learned from this and what they're going to do. If you haven't pre-ordered New World, I would strongly advise that you wait and look for a beta closer to the release next year. I'm staying positive that I think they're going to learn a lot from this process and the game will be in a better state towards launch 
and this beta doesn't exactly represent the game that we'll be playing next year. I don't think New World deserves a lot of the hate it's getting right now, but it really does need refinement before it's ready to release. What do you think about New World though? Have you been playing any of the beta? If you have, what do you think about the feedback that I've talked about today? Maybe you've got something that I didn't talk about today, but I'd be interested to hear it. For now though, I've been Hollow, you've been you, and I'll see you next time.